Freaking, freaking, <laughs> no. I wanted to update you with regard to some of the under the radar activism that I've been up to. Uh, well, one piece of activism uh, is trying to learn how to stop saying the word uh. uh as you can see, I'm flagging pitifully in that part of the activist world. But I'm not lagging when it comes to making talk radio calls. I make a lot of them, and you probably never hear any of them except the ones on Free Talk Live. Now, whether I record these calls or not, it might be a little bit dicey for me to record them and upload them for profit. That could fall into either a gray or a black area legally. So instead, I'd like to update you a little bit on my talk radio adventures, tell you a little bit about some of the more interesting conversations I've had and the ambush interviews that I've done on talk radio, but which you never heard. There have been a lot of such recent calls, but since I've never really done a video or audio or whatever that goes back and summarizes the ones maybe of some you know minor historical interest, I, th I think I am going to start kind of do it a little bit, a little bit chronological. I remember really well the first uh, call I made as a free stater to New Hampshire Talk Radio. After, is after I had moved, right after I had moved. I couldn't wait to get on the phone. It was in 2004, I called WKBK, and Dan Mitchell was the host back then. He is still the host now of their morning program, which has barely changed over the years, to its credit. Now, normally I have, and I think I probably had back then, uh, a sort of a policy that if you're going to call talk radio inside New Hampshire, you don't really f generally focus that much on the Free State Project. If you're calling talk radio outside New Hampshire, your priority should be to mention the Free State Project because you want to recruit people to move here. And once people are in New Hampshire, it's, there's no really need to bring it up. So it was unusual in that I, I immediately jumped into the Free State Project topic. I told him I was a Free Stater and uh, a, a Benson Republican, and I can't remember much else. But it was a nice call. He was fairly friendly, even though he's an authoritarian politically. And it wound up being the first of probably 400 calls I've made to that station in the years that I've lived in New Hampshire. I think I've averaged, in the 12-year period, I believe I've averaged about a call every two days to New Hampshire Talk Radio. Yeah, uh, I guess that would be about... about, about I would guess about 40, 4,800 calls over over the you know the the thirteen year period that would average to. You know, thinking about it, KBK is really the best radio station to call into in the whole state, uh, and uh, so it's. I would guess that actually I have made more than eight percent of my calls to to KBK, so I've probably called them more than four hundred times. It's probably more like seven hundred. Yeah, I, I try to be an asset to them, not an annoyance, and the same for the listeners. So I'll either call on topic or I'll call to provide them some free labor in the sense of you know providing them a, a news update about something that generally wasn't in the news, New Hampshire related. But there are other stations that have you know a less stable but still active talk radio call-in infrastructure. I guess I'm for fast forwarding quite a bit in time, but I once was able to ambush interview uh, Sheriff Arpaio, who was visiting the state. That was on WTPL, I believe, or maybe it was New Hampshire Today with Jack Heath. I, I can't remember. It was in the afternoon, and I remember trying to take this line of uh, focusing on the human rights of his victimless uh, detainees. So you've got people in there that haven't hurt anybody, but you're still exposing them to these 110 degree temperatures. Uh, is that appropriate? So his response was something like, the, "What? What are you talking about? Like prostitutes and stuff? Like, like they didn't count? You know, it was his was his uh, way of looking at that sort of thing. He didn't like he didn't care about their conditions, basically. Of course, it would be better to play you audio of the ambush interview, but again, the uh, authoritarian society in which we live makes it dangerous to use your own recordings on YouTube.
Like the rebels in Werner Vinge's novels, it's generally best to fight in a relatively safe or tolerated manner so that the fight can be maintained continuously. Anyway, it felt really good to be able to confront that guy. And to his credit, you know, he took calls. And to the radio station's credit, they didn't try to censor me. I just wish I could remember more about the call. And, of course, that we didn't live in an authoritarian society. More later. What are you arresting this man for? You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling. For details, visit freekeen.com.